There were a couple of moments, pinnacle moments in your career as a heart surgeon that led you down the path of what you're teaching today. One of them you talk about in chapter one of your book, a very young patient who had metabolic syndrome who uh, came into for surgery. And maybe you could share that story. And then after, you know, part of that was also some of the deterioration with your health becoming obese uh, in your late 30s. So if you could share both of those moments in your career and how that led you down this path. Yeah. And, you know, they really did intersect. Uh, and it, it kind of started on the personal front. You know, I had, I was a heart surgeon, um, you know, had struggled with obesity my entire life. Uh, but, you know, in my mid 30s, I found myself as a morbidly obese pre-diabetic heart surgeon. And I recognized that I was going to end up on my own operating table, so to speak. Um, you know, I was traveling down that same path that so many of my patients had followed. And like so many of them, I didn't know how to change, you know, the direction I was traveling in uh, because I was following the advice that I had learned to give my patients, you know, eat less, move more, count your calories, follow the food pyramid, all of the stuff that we've uh, heard. And it wasn't working for me and it wasn't working for my patients. And like I said, I was fortunate to start to come across some different information. Um, my journey really started with uh, hearing Gary Taub's talk at a medical conference, ironically enough. <laughs> and, you know, he at that time had just written the case against sugar. And of course, before that had written why we get fat. And it resonated with me. You know, it was a different idea about what was causing us to be overweight, obese, and unhealthy. And so I eliminated sugar from my life, went low carb, uh, ultimately, you know, kind of keto, now carnivore really for the past four plus years. And I am in the best shape of my life. And, you know, as I saw my personal health improving, that led me to ask different questions. Why did I hear about this from Gary, a journalist, and I don't mean that in any disparaging way, uh, but why didn't I hear about this from my medical school professors, my colleagues? Uh, you know, why was I learning more about the disease that I had dedicated my career to and was treating every day from, you know, engineers, computer scientists in some cases, uh, then, you know, I could get from the American Heart Association and the leading medical societies. Uh, so, you know, that opened my eyes to how our medical system is structured to take care of sick people. It's not really designed to understand why people get sick in the first place and prevent them from getting sick. Mm -hmm. And that is a much better approach because ultimately, no matter how good a heart surgeon I am, you know, no matter how good all the heart surgeons and the cardiologists out there might be, you're never as good after you have heart surgery or after you have a stent as you would have been if you didn't have that in the first place. And, you know, the opening chapter of my book demonstrates the problem with the approach of waiting till people get sick. Uh, because I tell the story of a woman in her late 30s with young children who ended up on my operating table with a devastating cardiac problem. And ultimately, it turned out to be an unfixable cardiac problem. And, you know, I then had to go inform her family, inform her children that, you know, she didn't survive. And that was preventable. Uh, that lady had been, you know, misdirected by the medical system. It wasn't that she didn't take care of her health. She had been seeing her doctor. She had been taking the medications that she was told to take, but no one talked to her about the underlying root cause of her high blood pressure and her obesity and her diabetes. And unfortunately that then led to, you know, a devastating unsolvable problem. You're, you're so right with uh, prevention, and that should be the mindset. It reminds me of the Einstein quote. Uh, he said, intellectuals solve problems, geniuses prevent them. And that is the best thing we can do is to be proactive. 
and thank God for conventional medicine because sometimes it's it's so needed to save lives. You've done that so many times with your surgeries, but we don't want to even need you. We don't want to ever need you, uh, doctor. We want to make your job obsolete, right? We want to make sure we're yeah. never on that medical uh, table uh, uh, getting a surgery or, or just, it, it's, it's unfortunate because to this day, people want to be healthy. They're, it's not that they want to stay unhealthy. They're just getting the wrong information and they're putting so much value in the authorities. And it reminds me of, and you went to Tufts University, so this is really relevant to you. It reminds me of what we saw last year with uh, Dr. Mosafarian and the food compass that came out. And it's interesting mm -hmm. because this just happened today and I'm bringing it up because it's perfect timing. I, I lectured at KetoCon um, with Dr. Mindy Powell's. We did a keynote lecture together a couple months ago. And I was talking about that food compass and I was showing that chart, you know, as they put Lucky Charms and Frosted Mini Wheats and all these processed foods above essentially like eggs and, and beef. And uh, I, I got a clip from that lecture. It was like a 45 second clip that I repurposed uh, on Facebook Reels, et cetera. And I went on Facebook this morning and I saw that it, it went viral. It has like 1.4 million views. And I'm like, oh, cool, this is getting out there. And I wanted to see some of the comments. And I came across one comment and I screenshot it. I'm going to read it and then I want to hear your thoughts on this. But somebody named Daniel Martinez, I'm going to say his name. He, he said, did the crowd pay to get this terrible nutrition advice or was it free? And I was wondering what he meant. Did he think I believed in the food compass or did he think, you know, me going against it was the bad advice? So I, I said, could you please elaborate? And then he responded, please elaborate on an egg fried in butter and random beef parts ground up not being healthy. I can't help you if you don't know that. <laughs> and he said underneath that, you're just a modern day pet rock salesman. That's what he called me. I don't mean, yeah. so anyways. That's 2023. I'm getting comments like that. So what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, yeah you know, and it, it doesn't surprise me. You know, this narrative has been so ingrained in us. And, you know, again, you know, this has been the narrative since 1950 uh, that, you know, saturated fat, cholesterol, fat in your diet, you know, which then gets extended to animal products in general is bad for our health. And, you know, so... I understand that people so believe it because it's the only thing that they've heard. Uh, but I also ask them to look around them and see what the results of that are. Do we really believe that the best that we can accomplish is that, you know, 60% of the adults who are over 50 years old are on multiple medications? Do we believe that being on the right medicines is the best way to manage our health and we can't do anything better than that? Uh, do we think that it's normal or it should be acceptable that 88% of the adults in the United States are not in good metabolic health? Um, you know, and again, these are the questions that I have started to ask. Uh, but for a lot of people, they don't even have the capacity of asking those questions. They are so trapped in their belief system and their information environment that they just can't see that there's another possibility. Uh, you know, I know many in our space, uh, you know, will often refer to uh, the matrix, you know, the movie uh, as the sort of analogy for this, but it, yeah. it really is, you know, a lot of people just can't believe that there's an, alternative thought around how to be healthy. They think that the U.S. dietary guidelines are the end all and be all. And of course, those have been constructed, you know, with the only goal of making people healthy. And of course, they're based on the best science and the best studies. And, you know, uh, and of course, they must be right because we've been told they're right our entire lives. And people need to start waking up to the fact, and thankfully more and more people are waking up to these facts, uh, that it just isn't true. Um, it hasn't had the effects that it was intended to have. And, you know, unfortunately, it's not based on the best science, and it's not only guided by what's best for people and patients and their health, but there are other influences there that have corrupted that whole process. And that's what we need to continue to bring awareness to. Yeah. And it's exactly the point. The conversations like this, your book, your podcast, 
it, it, it brings awareness to individuals so they actually could go and dig a little bit deeper, like we all had to do, right? For me too, I, I believed in the government guidelines for quite some time. You did too, and it led us down a path. I was also morbidly obese uh, at the age of 24 years old, and I had, you know, I figured things out. I, I dug a little bit deeper, and this gentleman, Daniel Martinez, who commented, like, I pray he digs a little bit deeper very, very soon and, and sees the truth.